Okay. Guys, welcome to the Wolfden Podcast. How you guys doing? I hope you're all good. First try. <laughs> First try. First we try. We have technical difficulties here at the Wolf Dead. Uh, uh, I am I'm... good. How are you, Will? I spilled seltzer on my pants during all that. Just want everybody to know. You look, yeah, you're using the app, the Discord app from now on. You look significantly better right now. Okay, I don't. I mean, because last week I looked better in Firefox. Uh, no, it, it it's it wasn't it's, that you looked better; you were in sync. Okay. And outside of it, you weren't in sync, but now you're in sync for some reason. Okay. So I don't know. Um. But anyway, hi guys. We have some things to talk about today. Uh, we're gonna talk about Nintendo. Talk. They they responded to Bloomberg specifically about uh the OLED switch, uh, uh, specifically the profit margin that they're going to make. Uh, but also, we got to talk about the Valve Steam Deck. I didn't want to make the Steam Deck the top uh, thing of the podcast because I already put out a video today on the Wolf Den Clips channel about me talking about the Steam Deck. Also, people are very mad about my reaction to the <laughs> Steam Deck. <laughs> so, <laughs> want to keep so it. So, time oh. to address the controversy. <laughs> yes, I'll get to that. Um, but <laughs> but also, I didn't want... Uh, I wanted to, to, to localize the hate all to that video. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, but before all that, a very special thank you to Cosmic Omelette for the two gifted subs. Two or four? I can't tell. It's it's weird. And, and, and it's two gifted streamers. subs. Uh, one to uh, Frosty Nacho and oh. one to Just Coffin. All right. Or Just Coin. Sorry. Just Coin. Just Thanks, Coin. Thanks, bro. And uh, Trep, thank you for the 10 months. He says, I'm pregnant. Should I name my baby Bob or Will? You should name it Wob. Yes. I was going to say combine our names, but don't name them William Robert because some kid's going to call him Billy Bob and then you're going to have to explain to the police why your son beat them up. Yes. Badly. Yes. So so Wob, that's a much better name. Yes. Wob, um, Wob works. Well, hello, Nicole. Nicole uh, B is in the chat. Uh, Coma TPG, thank you for the Prime subscription. Zizel, thank you for the 30 bits. Bob, you big dumb stupid head. You're not wrong. Jin Jukebox with the eight months. Good evening, Wolf Bros. Hope you're both having a great week. It's been okay. Been, say so. It's been a week. Well, I'm working on a video about mm -hmm. um, Joy-Con Drift. I'm trying to do the Joy-Con Drift fix that's been all over the news this past week. I asked. Oh, yes, so, I have heard. As you know, I have not ever had Joy-Con drift myself on any of my Joy-Cons because I don't right. usually, I don't typically use the Joy-Con. So I had two mm -hmm. different friends give me Joy-Cons that they say have drift mm -hmm. and will. Neither of the Joy-Cons, I could get neither of them to drift. Hmm. So I ripped this one apart. I took the thumbstick out. And I ruined the the the, the thumbstick assembly <laughs> to try to give it drift. And okay. It still only has a little bit of drift. I had to take the whole thing apart, break the friggin' the the metal off of it, and then super glue it back together. And it still only has a tiny little bit of drift. Not even not even enough to like prove that it has drift, like in any real way. You might have to do some extreme uh, testing Dude, on I've this. Been, I mean, like, I've been just I going like say, this all day for two, yeah, for three days now. I've been going like this, <laughs> trying to get the stupid thing to just have drift. Really? So I, I gotta just after the podcast, I gotta sit here and just play for a long time and try to like get yeah. my a Minecraft character to move for a while. I don't know. Or if any of you guys have drift in the chat, no, let us know. A lot of people are like, "I'll just send you mine," 
And here's the pro there's yeah. two problems with that. One, I want to get this video out this week. And two, you could send it to me and then I plug it in and it doesn't drift. <laughs> That's a possibility. Uh anyway. Late Snake, eight, uh, 485 bits. This is for the Tag Hauer Mario Watch Fund. Oh, that I never I oh, never geez. bought one. That that went up, right? For pre-order and I, I never got it. Uh, I think so. I mean you mom was very mad at you on sunday for spending so much money on a switch deck and an oled switch just want you to know she yeah she she wait she my mom texted me i want to <laughs> say wait, it, it, this was completely out of nowhere <laughs> unprompted i had no idea what she was talking about when she said this um she said she she wrote uh spend dollar sign spend dollar sign spend dollar sign but all one word no spaces so it looked like it was like 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 a bot or something and i said yeah. what and then she said did you buy another fancy switch and i said no it's just the controller i mean because i took a picture with the with the controller oh yeah, the yeah can't you sell them she said and i said no exclamation point exclamation point that was that i'm looking up the tag hour at mario watch to see if it's still available uh, I'd imagine that thing did not sell out. I mean, I know they didn't make a lot, but it's also like, what is it? $2,500? Sold out. Really? They made 2000 of them. Website's pretty crazy looking. Yeah. The limited edition watch huh. is sold out. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Stay tuned to our next launches. Basically, you're, you're effed. Yeah. You have to, if you want one. You got to go on eBay and buy it for uh, twice as much. This website's awesome. <laughs> they spent more money on the website than they did making the actual watch. Probably. Well, there goes that video, unless you know someone who got one. Which would probably be better for me, because I don't actually want the watch. I just want to make the video. <laughs> uh. Anyway, let's get into the main topic of the show, everybody. We got to yeah. talk about Nintendo officially responds to controversial new Nintendo Switch OLED report. Now, the reason why I think this is very interesting is because Bloomberg got a lot of flack for the way they reported on the rumors of the uh, Switch Pro, what they thought was the Switch Pro. Yeah. Uh, some people think there's still going to be a Switch Pro. We here at the Wolf Den think that's the next generation. We think that this is what everybody thought was going to be the switch bro um anyway uh bloomberg uh reported a lot of things and the way they worded it they made it seem like it was kind of fact and uh a lot of other youtubers and news outlets played telephone and made it worse and made it seem like this was definitely happening and uh, we all know the switch pro didn't happen um yeah but we got the OLED switch and a lot of people are mad at Nintendo because they got their hopes up from people like Bloomberg and uh, Bloomberg made another report <laughs> <laughs> and Nintendo seems like they've had enough. So go, go ahead. Uh, this is for this is uh, per comicbook.com. When Nintendo when the Nintendo Switch OLED launches later this year, the system will retail for $349, which is $50 more than the current model. A recent report from Bloomberg claimed that despite this increase in price, the OLED version costs just $10 more for Nintendo to manufacture. Today, Nintendo addressed that reporting with a new tweet debunking Bloomberg's figure. According to the company, Nintendo's profit margin compared to the previous Switch model will not be increasing. The company apparently felt the need to clarify this fact for its customers as well as its investors. The tweet from Nintendo can be found embedded below. Uh, a news report on... Why does it have, feel the need to open the tweet? A news report on July 15th, 2021 claimed that the profit margin for the Nintendo Switch OLED model would, inc would increase compared to the Nintendo Switch. To ensure correct understanding amongst our investors and customers, we want to make it clear we want to make clear that this claim is incorrect. Uh, Nintendo Switch's OLED price point has been an interesting 
topic of conversation since the model was revealed. It's rare to see a console remodel sell for more than the original version, but the price point makes a lot more sense given Nintendo's usual pricing strategy. The company tends to sell its system clo close to the cost, usually making a small profit per system. Comparatively speaking, companies like PlayStation and Xbox tend to sell their consoles at a loss while making up for it through software sales. It's rare to see Nintendo address a report such as this one, but the company has stepped in at times to make clarification for the sake of investors. In 2016, the company's stock saw a huge increase based on the success of Pokemon Go, but that stock dropped off significantly when Nintendo pointed out that it does not make the mobile game. If the Nintendo Switch OLED does perform well for the company when it launches, Bloomberg's reporting on the profit could have similarly led to unreal unrealistic expectations from investors. Uh, and then uh, to follow up, there was a second tweet where they said, we also want to clarify that we just announced the Switch OLED model will launch in October of 2021 and have no plans for launching any other model at this time. Damn. So they're basically uh, shooting down the idea of an, of another uh of another uh switch iteration yes so 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 while you were reading all that uh i uh was looking online i i've, I've tried this before I've, I've been trying to look for just the part of a 720p yeah. oled screen that's seven inches because right nintendo is saying here that uh so, so a lot of people even myself included i i said there's no way that this uh that this OLED switch is costing fifty dollars more for them to manufacture, because uh, the o OLED costs a lot, so it it, yeah. it makes sense that they would charge more for an OLED model. But they've had four years to to uh, to streamline their manufacturing process for the for the Nintendo Switch, so you would think that the cost of those parts would have gone down. Um, so while those costs go down, they can they can funnel in they can, they can shoehorn in a more expensive screen. So fifty dollars more seems weird to me. Um, Bloomberg uh, reported that uh, they're going to have a wider profit margin, which I would have assumed. But Bloomberg, you know, <laughs> uh, a, a, an actual news site just just blurts it out as fact. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um that's where that's where they're 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 getting in trouble uh and nintendo seems to have had enough with with them uh spreading misinformation about nintendo so they yeah uh, and also it's a bad look for their investors which that, is that's why, the big thing yeah which is why the nintendo co ltd uh japanese twitter account had to say it in english <laughs> Say, yeah. hey, hey it's it's that important they had to come out and address it in english on their japanese account yeah they had to they had to say you freaking americans are screwing yeah. this up again <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's not costing it's it's we're not making any more money uh but i still don't believe them i gotta be honest with you uh, I, I i i mean I, I like that they clapped back at bloomberg but uh and I also have problems with Bloomberg because of what, because of how they reported on all this stuff. But I, I don't believe Nintendo here. I think that they do have a bigger. I think that they will get more money off of the OLED one per unit than they did off of uh, current Nintendo Switches right now. I see. I don't know. I, I I believe that I believe them when they say like the profit margin. It's going to be a different profit margin. Right. Um, I, I assume that like the OLED. It is more expensive to because if it was wouldn't warrant fifty dollars, Nintendo would just probably release it at two ninety nine and cancel the old version. They but, did that with the battery, the the revised battery switch. But that's the thing. I think that uh, they are try. They're I think that they're legitimately trying to get more money out of people because they know that they could have ch charged more for the switch in in, in today's yeah. current uh, the state of things because the PS five is so expensive, the Xbox is so expensive, and there's a wide chip shortage and and certain technologies yeah. are selling for way more than they used to, like graphics cards and and now hard drives are the new thing that's going to be a pain in the ass to get. So, yeah. uh, 
I think that Nintendo is is realizing that they either need to or they just straight up want to sell the switch for more but that's just what i think it's not necessarily what is happening i don't work at nintendo and i don't have an right. insight at nintendo it's just what i think is happening at nintendo yeah um but uh according to nintendo they aren't making any more money maybe they're including research and development costs which would be a weird thing to include I mean, companies yeah. include that when they're talking about uh, profits, but uh, yeah, we don't usually include that when we're talking about uh, how much a uh, a product costs, like when they're when they're selling it, like the parts of the, of yeah. the product. Uh, it's it's usually something we we often uh, leave out. But uh, um, I would love to see a price breakdown of all of the parts. We, we usually we get yeah. that sometimes with with consoles. Um, but obviously, it's too early to tell. The freaking thing isn't out yet. We can't. We don't have iFixit tearing it down and uh, going through every part. Um, but yeah, if, uh, I'd imagine the price of some of those components have gone down over the past four years. So uh, how expensive? I would love to know how expensive this Samsung OLED part is for them to purchase yeah. per per unit, and especially because they're getting like millions of them. I mean, I'm sure it's. I mean, because Bloomberg said it's ten bucks like per screen. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's more than that, because it's got to be like a certain size. It's got to fit, um, you know, the switch itself. It's got to have the right connectors for the switch itself. Um, but yeah, I still feel like they're going to be making more money on this than they were on the previous switch. I don't. I definitely don't think it's a fifty dollar increase. Right, um, right. I, 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 I'm, I'm unless bullshit on Nintendo. Unless you know, it is a revised kickstand, <laughs> and lest we forget, it has enhanced audio. Maybe so, that's what fifty dollars is worth. A lot. We don't people, know what enhanced audio means. <laughs> a lot of people are saying the enhanced audio is literally just um, the holes are bigger for the speakers. <laughs> wouldn't be surprised uh there is the dock but the dock is the same dock it just has an ethernet port in it which i can't yeah. imagine being any different than just i i'd imagine no, it, that's just that's literally the difference between telling the manufacturer i want an ethernet or a usb port that you got one or the other you know yeah um uh brandon in the chat says bob and will are really trying to say what they want to say and not get sued. We are not going to get sued. Why would we get sued? Yeah, Nintendo doesn't give a shit about us. <laughs> no, they don't care. We, we talk shit about them all the time. Uh, also, Lord Hath Mercy says, do either of you hold Nintendo shares? Uh, I think he messaged in the chat the other day. He's, somebody spammed in the chat the other day. Do you own sh stock? <laughs> uh, I actually own a very little bit of Nintendo stock. I got it... Uh, in 2016 right before the switch um mm -hmm. but i got it was like i spent i was like 300 dollars back then so whatever that was in, in in late 2016 that's how many shares i have um and i haven't looked at it since um uh if bloomberg isn't getting sued then wolf den certainly won't i think bloomberg they might be they might be there might be some grounds for them to sue Bloomberg because of I don't think so. I don't think so. Cuz they it's... falsely reported the 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 Switch Pro. And, and, yeah, and but it, it's kind of hurting Nintendo's credibility right now. <laughs> yeah, but it's all it's also like it's a first amendment thing there so they 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 can claim protection behind that. Right. So cuz they're journalists and journalists like to do that. Well, that's the thing is is that uh there's the first amendment, but there's also defamation. Right. Well, they didn't really defame Nintendo. Right, but you like, know, they just, they just like... said it would get it would get thrown out. It, nice. Like no no court would take that. You right. know, they theorized we were gonna come out with a 4K switch. They're defaming <laughs> us. No, they're not. Medicine not says all Bloomberg stuff was posted as speculation. It was, um, 
the way that they worded it made it seem like it was as fact and and uh, the problem was the game of telephone that happened after when everybody yeah took that ran with it and left off the 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 speculation uh uh uh, uh preface um but bloomberg didn't really do a good job of saying this is just speculation but they yeah. pretty much said it's going to have dlss it's going to be 4k uh uh yeah so it, it, it i i think that they did a a, a poor job of, of of communicating that it was pure speculation i think that they kind of uh fed off of the views they they were like uh, they they reported they they made a new report every month with like a very tiny uh, yeah. change in, in in their in their tune. So, what grounds do you think Nintendo would use to sue if they did? I don't think they're going to sue. I just I just think, I just think um, ha- I think they have a reason to not like. I think Nintendo has a reason to be mad at Bloomberg. I don't think they're going to yeah. sue. I'm just I'm just talking out of my ass. They only really ever sue if somebody is like doing something with their intellectual property. You know, right. So like fan games or that one porno Ron Jeremy was in <laughs> things like that. The the only reason I uh, am, I mean, uh, the only reason I, I bring that up is because uh, companies usually sue if there's uh, if there's a person or another company that is directly uh, negatively affecting their their profits or, 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 or their mm-hmm. or their product. Uh, and in this case, I think Bloomberg did directly negatively affect their product. <laughs> or n- not, I don't think they're going to get less sales. I think a lot of the, I think a majority of the reason why people are upset about the OLED Switch is because uh, people were expecting a Switch Pro. And a lot of the reason people were expecting a Switch Pro was because of this reporting by Bloomberg. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Uh, I don't. I don't think they're gonna sue, though. I don't think they actually have. I think that you guys are right that they don't really have like any grounds to do it. Yeah. Uh, funny how those knockoff Joy Cons get sponsored by Amazon and don't get sued. Uh, it is strange. Amazon's uh, like the Wild yeah. West. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, I have a video on a, a lot of those, and they are all trash. Uh, but maybe no drift. I don't know. I think they all use the same sort of Joy-Con port. I mean, they must. Sort of thumbstick port. I think Joy-Con drifts a myth because I can't. I can't. I, I know for it. a fact it's not a myth. <laughs> I know. You I know for it. a fact it's not a myth. I had it. A friend of mine had it. Friend of the show, Izzy Norbre, had it. Well, I had two you know. friends that claimed that they have it, but uh, can't. Also, one of them, it's one of them, my friend Leo. He um, He brought his Switch over also. And he claimed that that was dead. And I was like, oh, I'll take a look at it, see what I can do. I charged it for one minute and it turned back on <laughs> at 100% battery. <laughs> so I was like, this is what I'm dealing with. Uh, I've got a left joy con that won't read down inputs anymore. I, I wish that was I wish that was this one. <laughs> I wish one of them, I wish there would be a pro. You should see the thumbstick in here. It is a mess mm. because it's all ripped apart and glued back together because yeah, I'm trying yeah. to give it drift. Anyway, uh, moral of the story, uh, Nintendo claims that they're not making any more money off of this more expensive Switch, and uh, I call bullshit. <laughs> um, so that's that. Also, uh, I've, I've been trying to find a part that's similar, or like a screen that's similar, like a 7-inch OLED or something. Yeah. Uh, Small HD, do you know that company? They make uh, monitors for cameras? no <laughs> similar to atomos there's usually small hd and oh okay yeah, yeah uh they make a seven inch that's actually 7.7 inches so a little big uh but mm. seven inch field monitor oled uh that's oh 1280 by 800 okay so i might have to take a look at that and see if i can do something with that um Anyway, uh, T. Compy, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate it. Uh, Coma says, I didn't get drift, but I had to send my Joy-Cons in because they wouldn't move up. 
I feel like that's like the same issue. Probably, probably related, yeah. you know, it, the, the wearing down of the thumbstick in certain ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is also kind of related, so I'll just say it anyway. Uh, uh, this was uh, uh, Japan Times uh, Ace Research Institute analyst Hideki Yasuda. Uh, said uh, that if this move from Nintendo is successful, it could set a precedent for uh, charging more across the industry. <laughs> the same report also notes that PlayStation is, quote, closely monitoring the market response to Nintendo's strategy, according to a Nintendo official who wished to remain anonymous. So if Nintendo's success... if So uh, some people are theorizing that Nintendo is going to release this uh, $50 price increase of their console and then mm-hmm. and then nix the original switch uh that's a theory that some people have i kind of think that that's a possibility uh and if nintendo does that and they're successful then sony's gonna do that <laughs> the, mm-hmm. the the next playstation iteration might be six hundred dollars this is this is bad news <laughs> this is not good. although I don't know because Sony and Microsoft are very much in the game of power. They mm-hmm. want to like have the most powerful hardware that they can have out there. And if that's the case, I don't I don't know if they would take the risk in increasing the price. Oh no, no, that's that wouldn't make sense because they're selling the consoles at a loss right now. So if anything they would get they would get it close to what it costs to make. Well, I think if they release an iteration, it's well, I think for the PlayStation 5, the iteration is just going to fix design problems because the PlayStation 5 has a lot of weird design quirks. Yeah. Um the fact that it's but, massive. <laughs> but it's possible they could just put something in there to try to justify a price increase and yeah. and and take Nintendo's lead, which would be crazy because $500 it yeah. was already a lot for a, a lot of people. When we saw the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X get announced, uh, they were expensive. Yeah. Also, is anybody having a hard time trying to get an Xbox Series X? Because I was at Adorama today, and they had a stack just sitting there. Really? Yeah, so if anybody wants an Xbox Series X, I assume they're around. Um, uh, yes, we all know the PlayStation 3 was $600, but uh, that didn't do well. Nope. They but had they to should... take out a lot of features to get yes. it down to ninety nine. Sony should be looking at Nintendo, but also looking back at their own history and trying to, you know, realize, you know, maybe they can do that. Yeah. Also, I think Microsoft had a good business plan with the Xbox Series S. Um but I don't think it's popular. I don't think people want the Series S. Even though it's great. I love the Series S. Um but uh yeah i i guess that i guess the, the, these companies are learning that cheaper isn't always necessarily going to mean yeah. more although money. although the series s is doing very well in japan is which it? is like the first time it, it, the, the first time an xbox console has done well in japan that's yeah because awesome. i think over there you know it's you know they like they like to have things smaller um and more compact and that's the perfect system for a small and compact living space also i mean the PlayStation 5 doesn't have a... I mean, the cheaper alternative is the all-digital version. Uh, mm. But the Xbox Series X is even cheaper than that. And I'm sure in Japan, they don't even... Not everybody has 4K TVs either, you know? Yeah. So that, that the Xbox Series S makes a lot of sense over there. Uh, also, the Xbox Series S is also all-digital. So... Yes. But yeah, it's, it's awesome. I, I, I love mine. Um... I think the Series S looks way better and more space efficient than the Series X. Yes, I do actually like yeah. the design of the Series S more. I keep looking this yeah, way. I, I don't. I don't there. like the design of any of the next gen consoles. No, I think they're all bad. It's Even a, the Series S because it's got the stupid speaker, but that's yeah. still better. And that's still better than the monolith from two thousand and one and of a early two thousands router that had a Mario mushroom. You know, it's ridiculous. I yeah, they should have just made the speaker part white. There's no reason to make the yeah. series. I don't. I don't understand why they didn't paint the fucking thing white. 
Yeah, it's very strange. Uh, and the series S is ridiculously small when you see it in person. It is, it's, yeah, it's like, uh, it's a little jarring when you see it because it, it's. Is, it's this, it, is it smaller than a one S? Yes. Wow. Uh, let me look at a comparison. Xbox Series S versus uh, One S. Uh, size? Isn't the One X smaller than the... The One X is like slightly shorter or something like that. Oh, here it is. Oh, wow. It's like way smaller. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's even small. And the One X is smaller than the One S, and it is smaller than that also. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it is ridiculously small. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to the everybody's favorite topic, the, the Steam <laughs> Deck. Yes. The Nintendo uh. Switch Crusher. Yeah, this is it. Switch is dead. Take it outside and old yeller it. Because <laughs> Gaben is here to give us what we really want. Let me find the actual Steam website. Uh, so this is uh, IGN broke the news. The Steam Deck has a form factor similar to a slightly larger Nintendo Switch. But with the capabilities of a full gaming PC, it runs a modified version of Steam OS, complete with a new console-like interface for easy navigation of both the Steam Store and your Steam library, but also provides access to an unrestricted computer desktop where any third-party application can be installed, including non-Steam games and launchers. In terms of hardware, the Steam Deck has a 7-inch uh, 1280x800 resolution screen, uh, 60 hertz LCD, a custom AMD APU chip featuring a four core, eight thread CPU, uh, paired with an eight RDNA two compute units for the GPU, and 16 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM. That is alphabet soup. <laughs> it's beefy. And people wonder it's why beefy. And people wonder why we don't build our own PCs. Practically speaking, <laughs> I do. That, I do. You though. do. You do, but the but like this is why we don't advocate for like PC gaming because you right. have to deal with like like bullshit like this. Unless it's, you're into it, it's, unless I, you're into it. I know what I know what DDR5 RAM is. I don't know what LP DDR5 RAM is. Right? Is that a Lincoln right. Park edition? Yes, actually. Somebody, yeah. Tim, in the chat, tell me. <laughs> Practically. Practically speaking, that makes it a substantial amount stronger than the Switch, allowing it to run modern games impressively well. As a point of reference, I was able to play a Jedi Fallen Order on an in-development Steam Deck at high graphical settings with little to no issue. It can even suspend running games like a console, and Valve says the, in the intent is really to give players access to their entire Steam library on the go. What better a room enable this, this guy's in. Look at the room he's in. I know. All that stuff. Jesus. It, it is very. Is that at Valve? That looks like. Because I can see oh, the heavy. Yeah, that's Valve stuff. That's all Valve yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay. To better enable this, the controller setup is on either side of the screen, has all the buttons, triggers, and a full size joystick you expect from modern gamepad and more. The sticks are actually capacitive meaning they can detect when your thumbs are resting on them, and below each one is a small trackpad that can be used for mouse inputs. There are also four back buttons on the rear of the Steam Deck that can be mapped however you see fit, and the display has a multi-input touchscreen. Additionally, the Steam Deck has Bluetooth support for any device you connect to a regular PC, including headphones like Apple AirPods. It can also be docked, their quotes, and hooked up to an external display as well as a mouse and keyboard if you want to use it more like a traditional PC. While Valve will be selling an official dock separately, a third-party USB-C adapter should work just as well, and those who simply want an experience closer to that of a regular handheld or console can ignore the more computery aspects. The, 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 the Speaking... dock is uh, 3D printed, the one that IGN uses. Looks yeah, like. that's probably just like a, a holder. You know? Oh yeah, it is just a holder. There's no ports yeah. on it. 
Uh, speaking of selling, the Steam Deck is available in three different models. Importantly, however, the only major difference between them will be storage the storage size and speed with their graphical capabilities otherwise identical. The base version will cost $400 and have 64 gigs of storage, followed by a $530 wait, 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 model. Let me, let, me, let me do this part. $400, okay, the base one. That's the one that's in the big headline. Everyone's like, the Steam Deck yeah. starting at $400. So everybody's like, oh, cool, $400 Switch competitor. But you realize that it's only 64 gigabytes and it has EMMC uh, drive in it. Uh, that yeah. is not as fast as the $530 version, which has a 256 gigabyte uh, NVMe SSD. However, yeah. we learned that the 64 gigabyte version, the base model, has the port for an NVMe, so you can plug in your own NVMe if you want to expand it. Also, all of these have a micro SD card slot. Yes, Will. Yes. Hi. So these things are moddable, is what you're telling me? Yes. The Steam says that the port is there. Other, I heard some other person say it might be a pain in the ass to put it in there, but it yeah, because this looks like because I'm trying to repair an iPad right now, right? And well, it is a disaster. That's a whole. You and I, I, the screen I, am, and I, I, I wish you luck. <laughs> I and I imagine, but I imagine that this would also be a disaster to try and like open up. Because I know it's supposed to be like a PC or whatever, but like this is a specialty designed PC for a specific, it's basically a tablet and you can't really open up tablets. We won't know until it comes out, but I don't expect right. it's going to be as easy as like upgrading the RAM in a MacBook from 2010, you know? Yeah. I don't expect it's going to be like that. So uh, we got to wait till we see when it comes out. They all have a port for a micro SD card slot. Um mm -hmm. So you can put out whatever storage you want in it through that. But some are saying that that slot is not going to be fast enough for some games. I think it might Probably be Probably not. But uh, so what I'm trying to say is this $400 model is probably not the one you want to get. I don't think, unless you want to turn it into an emulation, unless you want to put Windows on it and turn it into like an emulation machine, I don't think the $400 model is going to be worth it for anybody. Um or unless you have your own NVMe drive and you want to and you want to see what happens. But I got the $530 one. That has the 256 gigabyte uh storage. It has uh it's NVMe and it says faster storage. It also comes with a carrying case. Uh and then there's the $650 model, which is 512 gigabytes of NVMe yes. storage. But it says fastest storage. I don't know why they're it's, both NVMe. It not only it not only says fastest storage, mm -hmm. but it also comes with a premium anti glare etched glass screen. Right. So that means the other ones are plastic. Yes. So you are potentially getting a worse viewing experience on the other two because of this. I uh, yeah, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Uh because uh well, I mean, no. Like the Switch's screen is plastic, right? It is plastic, right? I think so. But I mean, like, if you were to take this outside, because oh, the glare. You know, people do people do play games outside, yeah, or even like inside, you know, under a under a desk lamp or something. That could be a problem. If you're in between the 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 two higher end models, the anti glare mm -hmm. glass screen might push you to the more expensive one. I could see that. Yeah. Um. Also, I'll note that the screen is 16 by 10. Apparently, that's a, a thing for PC games. Yeah, it's a popular PC ratio. I did. I never knew that until today. Um. Anyway, you can continue the article if you want. Uh, I'll skip down to at past the explaining the versions. The Steam Deck doesn't have a hard release date yet, but it is currently set for holiday 2021. And Valve President Gabe Newell told IGN that hitting these price points was painful but critical. A reservation pre-order system will be rolling out in the near future with Valve aiming to avoid the chaos and unpredictability of recent console launches. And all three price points will also come with a tailor-made carrying case. Uh, the uh, the pre-orders are done. It says expected order availability quarter two of 2022. So I guess that means 
if you didn't pre-order it, you gotta wait until then. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They did not expect this thing to blow up as much as it did. Yeah. Uh, is that it for the article? Can we... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then, like, there are expanse to other articles and whatnot, but... Um... So, yeah, I don't think that they expected it to be as popular as it was, but I think mm-hmm. I also think that they kind of saw the the um the the OLED switch news go out and people were mad there was no switch pro, so I think that they kind of rushed out uh, an announcement about this. I think that that's maybe potentially what happened. Um so what do you what do you think? Well, what do you think about this guy? I've said I I've gotta, said my piece. So I have I have opinions on it. Um, okay. As a device itself, I think it's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I think there's there's could be something to like a specialty device that's made for PC gaming like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think Valve made this with the intention of being a Switch competitor, but it kind of is a switch competitor because it basically does all the same things. Um, it can play all the indie games that are on switch. It can play um, a lot of triple a games more so than the switch. Uh, it can even play all of the NES and SNES games. You actually want to play on it <laughs> because you can mod it to do so. It, it, it's, um, it's inevitable that this would be compared to the switch. Yes. Yeah. It's for, yeah. it's for uh, a slightly um, different market, but yes. It is for a slightly different market. I don't think it's going to cannibalize the Switch market in any way, any significant way at least. Right. Um, and I would love to get my hands on it in five years when Valve liquidates their their supply. And they sell it for like 100 bucks. Because let's be real. Let's look at history. With the exception of the Vive, they've done this with all of their hardware. See, 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 Will, you, all had, of it. you had the Valve stands on your side for all of that until the end, and you crushed yes. them, and now they're going to be made. Because, because here's the thing, like, yeah, this is cool. This, like, I hope this is successful, and I hope they prove me wrong. But starting at $400 for the shit model, <laughs> I don't see how they're, they're going to make this. I don't see how they're going to sell this at a rate that would warrant it being successful and continue beyond five years or so. This is definitely a specialty item. This is definitely a high-end item. This is a niche item. And I don't think the niche is big enough to take this as far as it would need to for Valve to continue it down Uh, the road. I am completely, I completely agree with everything that you're saying. It's just that for whatever reason, uh, saying that Valve has failed all of their hardware endeavors besides the index uh, is like fighting words for some reason. Um, well, yeah. And, but also the index was... Uh, that was the HTC Vive, which was developed kind of in conjunction with Valve. Um, yeah. And then Valve turned it into the, the index. Um Look, it's possible this thing's good. I, I mean, that was a very yeah. poor way of putting it. It's it's possible <laughs> this thing is successful. Um, it's also, who knows what is successful to Valve? Maybe they're only making a couple of these because they know it's a very niche product. Um, I think it's going to be awesome for a very select f- uh, few people that uh, uh, love PC gaming, have a huge library of stuff on, on uh, Steam and uh don't want to don't want to switch or maybe they just want to be able to play games that aren't on the switch um yeah yeah. and have the money to do so um but i don't think this is the reason why i talk so negatively about this thing is because i'm so over everybody calling it uh, a switch killer or like this is what the switch pro should have been or blah 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 Mm -hmm. because uh i think this is really cool i don't think it solves the problem that a switch pro would have I think this is solving a completely different problem for yeah. a smaller uh, uh, minority of people. Yeah. But again, like, I'm, not, I'm not against this being a product at all. I think it's going to be really cool for different reasons. Because if you wanted to take your Steam library with you, you would need a laptop. Mm-hmm. And a laptop isn't really something you can play on the couch or in a car 
like you you need to set it up like you would a computer with a desk and a mouse and whatnot. So this is for so that's already a small group of people, people who play Steam on a laptop. This is for an even smaller group than that mm -hmm. who want to play it on the couch or in the bus or, you know, what have you. It, 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 and in my I, mind, this is a way for Valve to capture more signups for Steam and, and get more game sales yeah. through Steam. And honestly, if this feels good, I might buy more Steam games. So this might actually work for them. This might th 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 yeah. th this might get me to buy more Steam games. I have a, a massive Steam library for some reason. Um, and I can't play most of the games because A, I don't have a PC. B, uh, ever since I updated my Mac, I can't play a lot of the Mac games because they haven't upgraded them to 64-bit. So there's a lot of games that I, I have in my library that I want to play again. Uh, this would be perfect for me, especially because I prefer console gaming in the first place. But, you know, I can't justify a $400 price point. Um, and I just don't, I don't know if a lot of other people can. <laughs> Another thing that gets me in trouble when I talk about this is that uh, it's, a, it's a Linux system that mm. uh, it doesn't. So I get this wrong. I say that it emulates Windows to play the games. It doesn't actually emulate windows it mimics or 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 it translates the compatibility layers to then run on windows but the moral of the story is that um it tries to it, the moral of the story is valve is asking developers uh and kind of pushing them to optimize their games for this system and they're trying to get it the, the thing that translates it to 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 the thing that translates windows to linux is called uh proton it's it's valve's own software that that does that um they are working to make that system uh as best as it can be for the top games on on, on steam so mm -hmm. um the the moral moral of the story is there's potential that the games act weird and aren't fully optimized because they have to use proton so uh my point still stands that you could get this thing and your favorite game that you want to play on this thing might just not work at all or might work a little weird so i think everybody gr needs to vastly lower their expectations also um proton currently doesn't work with uh, a lot of anti-cheat software so a lot of the top multiplayer games straight up don't work right now in in proton so um like my my the when I saw this thing, the first thing I thought of was playing Warzone because I can't do that on my Switch. I can't even do that uh, on my uh, I can't even do that through uh, uh, cloud streaming on Xbox or anything. I, well, I I have mm -hmm. to connect to my to my Xbox, and it kind of sucks doing it that way. But if I could run Warzone natively off of this thing, that'd be freaking awesome. But Warzone doesn't have anti cheat, but there might be an issue somewhere. You know, if I was right. into if I was into uh, Rainbow Six, that would be a problem because that has anti cheat. If I was into Apex Legends, that's going to be a problem. So, um, uh, my point is that there's going to be a lot of people who get this and spend a lot of money because they have high expectations, and they're going to get it and realize it doesn't work the way that they want it to, or they have to put a little extra work into it to get it to to be optimal for them. Yeah. Uh, and that's a very PC gaming thing. Like PC gamers are totally cool getting a game and then tweaking every little thing to make sure that it runs perfectly on their system. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just personally would rather have a console that I buy the game and it just friggin' works. Yeah. Um, that's Atomic the hope for this thing, but it might not necessarily happen. Atomic Ozzy in the chat says, in all caps, you can put Windows on it. <laughs> yes. You yes, can. You can. Um, they have said you can put Windows on it. You can put, uh, you can buy games from Epic or uh, UPlay or EA Origin and whatnot, and that's all true. Here's the thing, though: the reason the reason why people would like a device like this is because it's simple. You just you pick it up, the games you want are right there. You download them to the thing, and that's it. People who the people who would buy something like this do not want to go through the rigmarole of 
installing another operating system right out of the box, installing a whole bunch of different stores, making sure games are compatible with something you bought specifically to play games on. You know, this is designed... I know nowhere they're saying this, but this is a hardcore gaming device for the casual market. That, that, that's, and that's their, that's what it seems like their strategy is. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like because it's a hardcore gaming device, it's going to have all of these hurdles and extra things that you would need to do to optimize it for yourself. And that's going to turn off a lot of people. I, I think all of the, va the the Valve stands that are that are really uh, uh, gung ho about this thing right now, they're the ones who will take the time to put Windows on and all this stuff. And probably have a great time, yeah. but that's not the vast majority of people. That's that's a very small niche of people that that will yeah. that will get this thing to probably run awesome and do everything that they want it to do. But I, the average Joe doesn't want to do that. Um, yeah. Also, putting Windows on it isn't going to solve all your problems. Yeah. L I'd imagine that the the reason why there's Linux on here is because that's how they can get these games to run optimally. Windows well, is probably going to it's probably going to be weird also. Yeah. I mean they've um SteamOS has been around since when? 2013 and like that's been Linux based since its inception mm -hmm. cuz Valve wanted to do a much more open uh, OS for gaming, and but they can tweak I don't it a lot and, and make yeah. it make it work good for them. I don't want to open Steam because I don't want to like crash my system or whatnot. But I just don't know. I mean, you look the comparison between Windows games and Steam OS games on Steam, like Windows like just drowns it. Mm -hmm. Like the majority of games still just run on Windows. So a lot of people say that they literally only chose Linux because it's free. And I can't imagine that that's the only reason. I'm sure it's a little bit of the reason, but I think more of it is that it's uh, open it's source. Reason, yeah. More of it is that it's open source and that they can tweak it to run great with the hardware that they chose. Uh, also, yeah. uh, there's other devices. Uh, this is not like the like the renaissance of, of, of portable gaming. There's other devices very similar to this. Uh, they are slightly more expensive at least the ones i've seen except for like the gpd win those are pretty cheap um yeah. and they all run windows and uh they're not windows is not like meant to be navigated with a controller it's like weird so the fact that there's like a like the like the steam os like skin over this is probably much better the the, the only thing i my only I, again, I think this thing's going to be awesome for, for a lot of people. Um, it I could get this thing and maybe it solves a problem for me. I don't know. But uh, I see a lot more people uh, would... I, I just... It, it seems a lot easier for, a, uh, for more people to get a Switch instead of this thing because it'd be a lot easier to play the games that they probably want to play. Unless they want to freaking take League of Legends with them or Dota with them or something. Yeah. Um, I don't see this uh, being as mass market as a lot of these uh, uh, people are saying. But again, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I don't. I whether or yeah. not it's whether or not it's like a raging success and they make another Steam Deck in like two or three years. I don't. I don't know. I, I think that history yeah. has showed us that uh, it's unlikely that this is going to uh, lead to bigger and better things. And but, you know, and again, it'd be I great hope, if it did. I hope that I hope we're wrong. I hope that we do see multiple Steam decks. Um, I just, you know, I, I pay attention to history because history has a way of repeating itself, and, and right. everything I've seen shows that you know Valve doesn't support their hardware for very long. I will say that. They seem to be doing a better job of promoting this than they did the Steam machines, because mm -hmm. that was a total disaster. Right. Um, this it's just it's one device uh, with three hard drive configurations, uh, and that's it. It's not like they're they're farming it out to different companies for them to manufacture however they see fit, and then they delay it so that the manufacturers have to release those same devices but running Windows. 
and not yeah, the they, Steam Machine branding. That, they noticed that that was a major problem with the Steam Machine stuff. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I think it looks really cool. Uh, uh, let me. I think it's a cool idea. I think it's a little ugly. Uh, I completely <laughs> understand why there's touchpads on it. Certain games are going to need that. Yeah. Um, probably not any of the games I'm going to want to play. Um, the D pad yeah. is in a horrible spot, but I understand where why the uh, why the uh, face buttons are where they are because you're probably not yeah. gonna, if you, most of the games you're playing on here are going to be uh, uh, twin sticks anyway, so you're going to probably touch the face buttons not so much. Um, but yeah. I won't know anything until I get this thing in my hands. I'm just trying to make sure everybody's got their expectations in check because. Uh, Chances are that this isn't going to be as big as everybody's hoping that it is, but uh, it's probably going to be pretty cool. I'll say that. I I want to I want to because I've been I've been sounding very negative, but I really do think it's going to be pretty cool. It's just it, it's just not going to freaking be like you know, uh, it's not going to be like sitting there in target next to the playstation and the xbox and the switch yeah. it's not going to be the steam uh, deck you know um so also keep in mind this is still not half-life 3 <laughs> so don't forget that they still owe us an end to that story and this is not going to fix that I unless half-life 3 is exclusive to the steam deck then don't talk to me I still haven't played Half Life Alex, but I can. You know, I just need to upgrade my hard drive on this computer because I could totally just play it. Upgrade your hard drive and then invite me over so I can play Half Life Alex. How long is it? I can't be that long. I'll look it up. Uh, here's to your expectations getting beaten, Bob. That's listen. I'd much rather have low expectations and have my yeah. mind blown than the other way around. Also, uh, also, Lord Hath Mercy has just been flooding the chat with uh valve propaganda is the best way i can <laughs> i can describe it he's really uh, really gunning for this thing he wants it to be the glorious thing that it is uh uh 12 hours for half-life alex that's pretty beefy i was expecting less because that's uh, shockingly beefy i was expecting it to be less because the the vr yes yeah. Um, Half Life. That's a, that's a, that's as much as Half Life Two. S. Marcy says, "I love that for him." LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think Half Life Alex is Half Life Three. That's well, it's I a think. prequel. Oh, piss! All right, let's stop talking about this. Yeah. Um. Again, I got one. I pre-ordered one, so we'll see what happens when it comes out. Yeah. Um. Oh, there's more Steam Deck news. Did I say Steam Deck? Uh, <laughs> I meant the Stream Deck. Yep. Elgato picked a very bad day. day to announce a new Stream Deck. <laughs> <laughs> it looks uh, exactly the same as the old Stream Deck. Uh, where is it? Elgato's Stream Deck Mark II isn't actually the first Stream Deck product, but it's the newest and supposedly best in the line of devices that streamers can use to streamline their actions, assigning complex tasks like turning on a light or setting a mic volume at a certain time to a single button. If you don't stream or can't envision why you would need that, here's how it works. And there's a video of the new stream deck and all the things it can do. I'll note that I have one. I have the old one. Mm -hmm. uh, it only works 50% of the time. So uh, I don't, I can't recommend it, <laughs> but um, I, I, I like stopped. I have it all set up for streams. So when I switch between, yeah. things, let's see if it works. Yeah, there it goes. So I'm pressing it to switch between scenes um, all right. and, and I can mute the mic and whatever, but uh, that's pretty cool, but it only works 50% of the time. On Mac though, when I switch to my Mac partition, I have it set up so it opens certain folders and it could also open Photoshop, Premiere and stuff like that like certain apps yeah so uh that's pretty cool i have hotkeys for certain folders so like when i'm ready to work on a video i open up the video folder and my dropbox folder and i have everything like set up ready to go so even if you don't stream 
uh, it's pretty cool to be able to set hotkeys for certain apps and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen people with like multiple stream decks lined up and they can edit complete videos using just that. It's insane. Yeah, yeah, you can get a bunch of them. You can get the XL one, the really big one. There's also yeah. a tiny one you can get. Um, it's just funny. Like, whenever, when the, all the big news broke out about the Steam Deck, the first thing I thought of was the Stream Deck. And <laughs> it also just so happened at the exact same time Elgato had, like, a, a, like a keynote. And they yeah. announced the new Stream Deck, which is basically the same as the original. There's, like, no difference here. Except maybe it'll work this time, a hundred percent of the time, yeah. not just fifty percent of the time. Um, Elgato also announced a bunch of other stuff, like a like a new boom arm, uh, that's low profile. Uh, they they have a webcam now. Uh, I just see the webcam. The webcam looks nice. Nothing that I'm interested in. The the boom arm yeah. might be cool if you're interested in a boom arm, but uh, I, mine's fine. I don't need anything crazy. Um. But anyway, that's that that that's just a fun little fun little thing that happened. Yeah. Uh, Sage Phoenix with 18 months. I miss Will's comic vids, uh, but at least we still get him on the podcast. I you can't get rid of me that easy. I'm so I'm <laughs> still gonna be here. And I uh, look, I know I I've I've promised videos and I haven't been making them. I've been I want to make them better than they were, and that takes time. And I'm spending way too much time scripting them and that's yeah. that's on me and i am sorry scripting is the i have like part. i have like five different ideas that i'm like halfway through scripting them it's a disaster because i don't want to just do what i did before i I want them to be smarter and better mm -hmm. god damn it uh yeah it's scripting is the worst part you can really get yeah. stuck uh doing that forever you gotta like yeah force yourself to, to wrap it up uh anyway uh id software did you know will the more pc stuff crazy yeah did you know they've had a mario 3 port i didn't so i actually did okay. i i part of the um part of the id legend was that uh john carmack created a port of mario 3 to show to nintendo to try and get them to try and get id the license to port over Mario 3. Uh, the legend goes that Nintendo was very impressed with what they did. They liked what they saw, but told them no. Yes. Uh, so instead, uh, id went and made Commander Keen, which is so, a very fun game in its own right. Also, interestingly, this uh, EXE that is being recorded and played through Vimeo is uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's playing off of a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little top bar. Anyway. There you go. Uh, so, Museum obtains rare demo of its software. Uh, uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 PC port. The strong National Museum of Play has obtained a rare demo of Super Mario Bros. 3 that a pre-Doom id software coded for MS-DOS PCs back in 1990. The acquisition uh, will ensure that the history... That hit the historical curiosity will be preserved and accessible to researchers well into the future. I hope I can play this thing. Students of video game history have long been aware of the existence of the demo, which was described in detail in David Kushner's excellent 2003 book, Masters of Doom. Its software, then known as Ideas from the Deep, IFD, coded the game in under a week and sent a copy to Nintendo in the hopes of getting a contract to develop an official PC port of the NES Classic, which had launched in the U.S. earlier in 1990. Part of what made the demo special was a John Carmack coded scrolling algorithm that went way beyond the stuttering background movement and full screen wipes you'd usually see in late 80s DOS games. When looking at PC games of the era, there were really weren't titles with the smooth scrolling screen in Nintendo's hits. Uh, on screen right now, you can see uh, this. I think this is level. Yeah, this is World One Two, and it's not the real one. And it says on the yeah. top of the screen, "Like it?" Question <laughs> mark. Um, where was I? Museum of Play digital games curator Andrew Borman told ours via email. 
Um, and though Nintendo would never entertain the idea of a PC port for Super Mario Bros. 3, its software was, quote, not direct not deterred by the rejection and the technology was reused for commander keen which is still one of my favorite series of that era borman said uh though the demo's existence has been well known for a while the closest the general public has gotten to it was a 2015 video series by john romero showing many of the demos levels and functionality Fast forward to today when Borman said he was surprised to find the demo sitting inconspicuously in a larger collection of donated software. Quote, the individual who donated it was a game developer, Borman told ours, but they did not work on this pitch, instead receiving it during their work. It wasn't something I expected to see in this donation, but it was extremely exciting, having seen the video Romero shared back in 2015. One of my favorite things at the museum is helping to process incoming donations, especially when we can help share stories from important developers like id Software. Uh, I'm not reading the rest. Uh, Borman said the demo will be available upon request to researchers and other parties with a relevant interest. There are no current plans to exhibit the game to the public in the in the Strong's soon-to-be expanded Ro Rochester Museum space or elsewhere but borman said that there are plenty of opportunities to come in the future for that kind of display yo can i like a book an appointment to play it i think you can mm, i don't see any notice of them like making this available to the public yeah um, no i don't think you would have to be like a gaming historian or something and like ask them to play it <laughs> the strong museum of play is in rochester new york yes how far away is that from me um it's very far right you know where canada is right yes <laughs> yeah close close to that oh my god it is seriously like right there yeah uh i'm gonna see how far away it is from you only six hours. Like, yeah, only six hours. Not a problem, dude. Nah. So I think that's pretty neato. Um, yeah, no, it definitely is. I would love to give that a shot. It's. It looks like it's pretty short. It's just the first world. Uh, yeah. Not even complete levels, I don't think. But uh, and it's definitely not gonna play as good as it looks. It looks a little jank. Well, to original. It looks Super a little Mario. jank, but. I think it's worked well enough. I mean, because it did impress Nintendo, so it must work well enough to be, you know, functional. They I mean, it's probably, not going to run as smoothly as the the NES did. They probably tried to get Mario to run on PC, and it ran like crap. They have they had yeah. PC games. They were just very bad. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway. Um. So maybe hopefully they'll make it available to try out. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, because they just it's just a PC port. They could just run it on a PC. Yeah. Anyway, next news report: Netflix wants to add games within the next year. Oh boy. Yes. Netflix will be expanding its streaming service to include video games in the next year, according to a Bloomberg report. The streaming platform hired off. Former Electronic Arts and Facebook executive Mike Verdu to head up the project. A report from the information in May suggests Netflix was looking for a video game industry executive to expand its streaming lineup. It was reported at the time that Netflix was considering a bundle of games like Apple Arcade. However, Bloomberg reported Wednesday that the games in Netflix's video game expansion will be added alongside the company's current selection similar to what net to what Netflix did with documentaries or stand-up specials according to the report games won't cost extra at least at this point in the planning it said Verdu also worked on the Sims plants for zombies and the Star Wars franchise Netflix expects to hire more positions within its gaming division in the coming months Netflix spokesperson told Polygon in May that the company is excited to do more with interactive entertainment. Netflix has produced games before alongside third-party developers. A Stranger Things mobile game and Stranger Things 3 of the game are among its titles. 
Netflix is also known for experimenting with interactive experiences via its own streaming platform. In 2018, it created Black Mirror Bandersnatch, a choose-your-own-adventure-style movie. It expanded on the idea in 2020 for an interactive episode of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, Game-inspired TV TV shows and movies have also been increasingly common as part of Netflix's original lineup, with shows based on Dota, Castlevania, and The Witcher. More video game-inspired shows based on Magic the Gathering, Sonic the Hedgehog, and League of Legends are coming too. Famously, Netflix has said its biggest competition for attention is not other streaming platforms, it's games like Fortnite that Netflix competes with and loses to, the company said in 2019. More and more companies are attempting to build out what Epic Games called its metaverse, a virtual world that's more than a video game. Fortnite and its gameplay remains a key draw for players, but video games are now also important social worlds. Players have always used these spaces as social hubs, but video game companies are adapting existing structures to add even more opportunity there. Not only can players chat with friends while playing games like Fortnite and Roblox, but people can now watch movies and attend live concerts too. Uh, so I, that's, I, it's interesting that, uh, I mean, it's, I hate this, like, I hate this capitalist system where, uh, <laughs> like companies that are so big need to keep getting bigger or else they are failing. So yeah. Netflix is already as big as they could be. So they need to move into other industries in order to continue to grow, which I think is like gross. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting to see that uh, they recognize that video games are stealing their views from movies. Yeah. So uh, instead of making the movies better, because there are Netflix is great for what they have. Um, yeah. They're deciding uh, they would need to dip their toe into the video game market because they literally yeah. can't be any bigger in the movie and TV industry. <laughs> um, um, I know, like, before we went live, I saw apparently they had an investor's call and they brought up this new, like, video game venture. And they said that it's going to be, they're going to be a lot more, like, it's going to be focused on the mobile side of things, so playing on your phone or a tablet or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But they will not charge extra for the games and there won't be like microtransaction or like games like that. So this is, this is going to be included in your current Netflix subscription at no additional cost. Wow. Okay. Having I, said that I'm down, having said that we must remember that Netflix raises its price every year mm. at, at, the, at its, it seems so I would not be surprised if they introduce a gaming tier that's a little bit more expensive than the base model. Mm -hmm. You know? Interesting. So so, so how, do they, how do they plan on making the games run? Is this all cloud? Probably. That would make the most sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm down. I mean, uh, they're right, though. Like, I don't watch Netflix, but I will log in if I can play a game through there, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're probably focusing on mobile because it's probably easier for them to implement some sort of control um, as opposed to like doing it through a set top box because I actually watched the interactive Kimmy Schmidt movie and I had to do that on my Xbox because my Apple TV wasn't compatible so the, the choose your own adventure movies that they have it's as of now some of them are not compatible with certain devices so and it would be interesting if they would let you play games on your Xbox or your PS5, you know? That'd be weird. I can't imagine would that. Would Sony or Microsoft have a problem with that? I'd Probably. They would have a problem with that, yes. Yeah. I don't know about Apple, though. I mean, plug it, like, because an Apple TV, you could plug a controller into it. Well, you could wirelessly have a controller. Well, I don't know, because remember, because Apple doesn't allow Stadia or xCloud. True. That so. is true. That's a good point. Um, so I don't have Netflix. I moved off of yours, but I barely yes. ever watch it. I, I barely watch anything on Netflix. So if I yeah. didn't have your subscription, uh, I would, this might get me to buy it. Yeah. So I, it's, it, it's, it's an interesting strategy, but it might pay off. 
Uh, all right, everybody in the Did chat you? is is letting us know that uh, I put this in the keep. Mm -hmm. Nintendo has announced new Switch Online stuff. Oh. I don't think they... Did they announce the American one? I don't see it. Oh, are these only coming... Yeah, I didn't... I follow Nintendo America. I didn't see anything. They didn't tweet anything, uh, but Nintendo Japan mm -hmm. did. Uh, getting friggin' Dead Dance. Uh... What's this other one? Oh, Shimagami Tensei If. If. And Bombo's Bomboozle. Trailer is up on YouTube. Oh, uh, for the for the American one? Oh, it is. Interesting. Oh, okay. so what are we getting? Let's see, Will. Let's let it play out real quick. We got All right. here. We got oh, I like the Metroid. He's got the Metroid icon. We got Claymates. Remember Claymates? Oh, yes. Claymates. The, the the classic SNES game. I'm fast forwarding through this crap. Jelly Boy. Will. Oh, my Member? God. So these are all SNES games, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, these are definitely SNES. And Kablooey, which is a uh, bomboozle in Japan, I guess. Oh, it says Bomboozle. Yeah. It is Bomboozle. Okay. Wow. Oh, my God. What, what fun. Maybe that's why they haven't announced this on the Twitter yet. <laughs> uh, so if you're a Shimogami Tensei fan and you speak Japanese, you got a good game for you. Dead Dance also might be pretty good. It's a, it's a beat-em-up. And it looks like uh, oh. you could play it if you don't speak Japanese. Still no Star Tropics 2. Still none of the Earthbound games. Uh, still missing. I'm sure. I'm sure they're missing a Donkey Kong in there. We got the country games, right? I think we did. I've something in my mind tells me that like we're missing one, but I pro I might be wrong. No Mario, Mario RPG. RPG. Yeah. Um, let me see the full list here. How many yeah. Donkey Kangs? Oh, uh, we get my switch. All of them. Battery's dead. All the Donkey Kongs. It is all of them. Yep. Okay. Chrono Trigger is another one we don't have. Yeah. Chrono There's Trigger. There happens to be a lot. Well, does did Chrono Trigger come out in a collection? I don't think so. But at this point, I'm more because like third party developers have been just putting out the games on their own. We got the Mega Man collection from Capcom. We got the Castlevania collection from Konami. So I'm more interested in like the Nintendo first party stuff like Mario RPG or the Earthbound games or that one Fire Emblem game that they sold separately. <laughs> yeah, that was didn't put it a, in a switch online. That was a major slap in the face. Yeah. Um, is Act Razor on there? It's been so long since I've launched that app. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I only know that game because no. of the uh, we uh, the we shop channel song. Yeah, Act Razor Blazing Laser. I forgot. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, another disappointing month for, uh, Super Nintendo yeah. games. I really hope in September they're just like, bam, Game Boy games or, yeah. or, uh, N64, but I doubt it's 64. Japan has been getting Nintendo Switch Online, SNES and NES games. Sadly, it's just been, it's just what's been happening. Yeah. It looks like their games were better, honestly. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on here. Warframe gets cross-platform play. I'm actually excited about this. Uh, I actually literally, on. I looked this up a day mm -hmm. before they announced this because I was thinking of playing Warframe and I was like, I wonder if cross-play and cross-save is, is a thing yet. And I looked it up and well, I was very disappointed to hear that it wasn't a thing. 
and now here we are uh, I, I wanted a good looter shooter yeah and uh i remembered warframe i was like oh warframe's awesome and i i uh uh i don't want to play it on my my switch though i'd rather play it on my xbox um yeah so i was gonna download it on xbox and then uh i was disappointed because i remember back in the day when it came out on switch i have a video on it it's a sponsored video um i ported my stuff from playstation 4 because it was one of the first playstation 4 games uh and yeah. it was free so i played it and i was like it's pretty cool um I, you were allowed to transfer your stuff from PlayStation 4 over to Switch, but it was a one-way ticket, and you weren't able to take it back, and then it was final. So I did that. Yeah. So now my stuff is stuck on my Nintendo Switch. I would like to now bring it over to Xbox. And here we uh, go. Here we go. Digital Extremes announced during TennoCon 2021 that its popular online shooter Warframe will be getting full cross-play and cross-save support letting Space Ninjas take their characters across PC, Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and Xbox One seamlessly. Uh, correction, originally this article stated that cross-play and cross-save would be added to Warframe later this year. This was wrong, and the article has been updated to remove that information. Very good. Uh, the big news revealed at the top of the live stream was that Warframe will be finally getting true cross-save and cross-play support, something fans have been asking in, uh, re and requesting for years. Uh, in a press release, Digital Extremes explained the decision to add these features to the eight-year-old shooter. Community is incredibly important to us, said Sheldon Carter, Chief Operating Officer at Digital Extremes. Uh, opening up cross-play and cross-save is just one of the many uh, more efforts we will take to bring more players together, including extending Warframe's fast, fluid action combat experience to other global platforms. During Tenno the TennoCon live stream, Digital Extremes also teased a version of Warframe is currently in development for mobile devices too. No more details about this port are shared at the event. Uh, likewise, no specific date was given for when to expect crossplay. Devs showcased a small bit of gameplay live on the stream showing how folks on Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, and mobile will be able to easily group up and play together in all previously released Warframe content. Digital Extremes explained that this was the most requested feature by the community for a long this was the most requested feature by the community by a long shot and the team was excited to finally show it off. War, Warframe's next major free update the net, the new war was shown off today during the event. Digital Extreme showed off gameplay of the new update. No specific date was given for when this uh next update uh pitting players against a big bad enemy known as the Sent the Sentinel uh, will be released. The current release window is later this year. When it finally releases, it will hit all platforms at the same time, and future updates will match these release patterns. So, uh, everybody, yeah, everybody thinks that this new update is going to launch alongside the mobile port. Uh, yes. I, I also, the mobile port might be when they announce cross save and cross play. I'd imagine they would yeah. hold the mobile port until they have cross play and cross it because what would the reason for the mobile port even be other than yeah. just playing it while you're out and about like imagine yeah you're no. like on vacation or something and they're like oh yo check it out this new gun just dropped and you're like oh shit i don't have a console you just whip out your phone and all of your stuff's there that would be sick um, yeah so yeah this this i think will get a lot more people back into warframe it'll certainly give me a reason to play it again um if you haven't played yeah. warframe it's freaking awesome it's uh it's free uh it's got some microtransactions and stuff but uh don't spend any money until you try it out and see if you like it um mm. but yeah it's on switch and the switch port is fucking awesome uh uh cecil in the chat says and yes the gyro aiming is sublime the gyro aiming is awesome uh i the, the that, character yeah. i have has like a sniper or something and uh you just aim with the left trigger and then you use the gyro to like to like you know uh uh, fix your aim a little bit and it's freaking awesome yeah uh listening as i walk and i def thought you're we're talking about war zone i know warframe <laughs> is the game we're talking about uh yeah it's eight years old dude that's oh, crazy another reason there might not have been cross save for this long uh is because uh there's a lot of platform exclusive loot 
So mm. uh, they had to either wait for those contracts to go up or make some deal where you could have it on different platforms and f- figure out how to fix that. Um, also, let us not forget that thanks to the Epic versus Apple lawsuit, we learned that Sony yes. really, really, really does not want this to happen. Yes. So Digital Extremes probably had to play, had to pay a pretty penny for the ability to get Warframe available on other consoles for crossplay. I wonder how that worked with the whole uh, Warframe to Switch situation because I think that was before Fortnite on the Switch. Yeah, I think. Well, I think save transfer is one thing, mm-hmm. but like the ability to play each other is, is right. different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is exciting. Uh, I hope that it comes soon because I would love to play this. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a good new looter shooter. And if I could play it on my Switch and my Xbox, that would be freaking awesome. I would definitely uh, get back into this game. Uh, Anyway, uh, we got Man of Steel with 21 bits from before. It says, Will, are you checking out Masters of the Universe Friday? Uh... I was never like a Masters of the Universe fan, so I'm not like going to rush to see it, but I am curious about it. And if you don't know, it's uh, Kevin Smith and his crew. They've created a actual sequel to the original 80s Masters of the Universe cartoon. Uh, It's aged up because that audience has aged up, but it's still supposed to be, you know, in line with what that cartoon was. Um, Mark Hamill is playing Skeletor, which is perfect casting. Wow. Um, other than that, uh, I'll I'll catch it when I when I get around to it. Not again. Not gonna like rush out to see it, but it doesn't look bad, all things considered. I am excited that apparently we're getting a new GI Joe cartoon next year. So yeah. Oh boy. Did you see Space Jam? I did see Space Jam. Wow, you did. I didn't think you did. I did. Well, we were like sitting there on Friday and I, I looked at my wife and she looked at me and we're like, do you want to just watch and get this fucking thing over with? And we did. And I, I tweeted this. It really does feel like somebody typed in a lot of buzzwords into an AI program that farted out a script because it's just it's just buzzword after buzzword after buzzword after buzzword in that movie. That's, it's very unfortunate. There, and the most unfortunate part about it was I saw, I didn't tweet this out, but there were glimmers of an interesting idea in this movie about, because when LeBron first gets to to the Toon world, it's just Bugs Bunny. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is gone. And uh, LeBron has to, of course, assemble a basketball team and like to fight Don Cheadle. Um, So he he looks for like all the top... um, Warner Brothers characters, so like Superman, the Iron Giant, King Kong, and all that. But Bugs recruits the Looney Tunes. And there's an interesting idea about how the Looney Tunes kind of outdated, aren't really popular anymore, and this is like Bugs' attempt to get the band back together to prove that they still have it. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've all seen the trailer by now where the Looney Tunes are like full 3d computer generated for the main event when that happens they are visibly disgusted by it <laughs> like when it had like they look at themselves like they are not happy with the fact that they are now full 3d and that could have like that could have tied into the whole we're the looney tunes we don't need to be modernized we just need to be the looney tunes but of course they don't follow up on that they don't fucking do that. They just go with the the cheap and easy route of references for the sake of references. The, the whole movie is, is basically that. And again, I know the original Space Jam is not like a, a sacred cow or anything. I understand if you think it's a bad movie. I get that. But you have to admit there's a simplicity to it that just makes it work. And this one does not follow that. It just, it goes off the rails completely and it it doesn't work on the same level. And I, I will never accept the excuse that it's a kid's movie because 
just because it's a kids movie does not mean that it's a bad movie. Kids do not deserve bad movies. Mm. Okay. Into the Spider Verse is a kids movie. All Pixar films are kids movies. The Muppet movie. Star Wars. Star Wars is a kids movie. The Muppet movie is a kids movie. And uh, would you excuse any of those because they're just kids movies? No. Just because it's a kids movie does not mean it's okay that it's bad. Right. So. Uh, there you go. That's it. So what yeah. happens when, uh, when he tries to recruit like Superman? What? Why does he not? Why is he not allowed? Because Bug screws it up. Oh, because <laughs> da- he does, Daffy because... is Daffy is hiding in the DC universe. All all the Looney Tunes are hiding out in all the different Warner Brothers owned universes. So Daffy is hiding out in the DC universe, and they're in Metropolis. And rather than recruit Superman, Bugs finds Daffy and gets him. And they they do that throughout. Like they go to uh, the Mad Max universe, and they get. Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner instead of Mad Max. They go to the the comic book universe and they get Lola from Themyscira instead of Wonder Woman. Things like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm glad I don't have to see that movie anymore. Um, yeah. Don't, uh, save your time. Also, the soundtrack is not as good. I feel like that's more important. That is pretty important. Yeah. Uh, let's get through some more news real quick. Yes. Uh, uh Skyward Sword Amiibo is yes, we do. I do want to plow through it. it. Yeah, okay. So the 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 Zelda Loftwing and the Zelda and the Loftwing Amiibo set um for Skyward Sword HD has been delayed. It was supposed to launch with the new game, but now it is coming later. Um uh, this is a problem because uh the this amiibo had a quality of life improvement to it. <laughs> um, it had like a fast travel system between land and sky. Yeah, it it, it basically is a microtransaction. And also yeah. it is expensive and very large. Yeah. Uh, and now it's just, it's not coming until I think August. The quote is, uh, the Zelda and Loftwing amiibo figure is currently impacted by unforeseen shipping delays. As a result, only a small portion of the Zelda and Loftwing will be available on its scheduled July 16th launch date. Additional shipments are delayed until August. We will ship additional amiibo to retailers as soon as they arrive. Yeah. And that is that. Uh, Very unfortunate. So if you have one of these boys, uh, you are going to have to wait. A little longer yep. and that kind of sucks yeah, it very much sucks and that's why uh i feel like nintendo needs to stop making amiibo do things like this <laughs> yes um it's uh a lot of their amiibo with their main triple a games give you a little something like to make the game easier to play and it's like kind of like a yeah. cheat code and this one is like straight up there's a whole system that's based around uh using this amiibo yeah. so it's kind of it's kind of a little, a little little shady anyway skate 4 developer assures everyone it's still making skate 4 um so basically ea is gonna have its um ea play uh yeah, soon that. i think it's uh it's it's soon i thought it was today but i don't think it is i think it might be tomorrow um, um skate 4 which was announced last year um will not be shown at the event um but thursday. they made a thursday okay they made a video that says we're working on it and the narrator gets mad that they you don't see any gameplay during mm-hmm. the video all you see is like people in mocap suits mocapping the skating the skating you see some influencers who i don't i don't know because i'm old talking about how cool it looks and a couple of the developers saying yeah we're working on it um I think this is good of them to do because uh they people probably were expecting uh some words on skate yeah. for and uh yeah. they needed to say something like we're working on it but we have nothing to show. So because if yeah. they just showed um, this, it would have probably pissed people off. This says to me when they announced skate four originally, that said to me, oh, people are excited for Tony Hawk's pro skater. We should probably revive skate. Right. That's exactly. And then what probably happened. They were caught off guard by how much people liked Tony Hawk's pro skater one and two and how well that did. 
and now they're really feeling the pressure, but they have nothing to show for it. So let's just, just got to do something. Got to yeah. do something. So, uh, I mean, it's going to be good. It's going to be a while, though. They probably have so. done yet. Yeah. Um, there's other things about EA Play. Um, they said that they, they they straight up announced we don't have any Skate 4, but we have something. Or this was the something. something special. Oh, is that the something? That was uh, the something for Skate 4, yeah. People are expecting big things out of this EA Play. Uh, I expect nothing from no one because... Uh, uh, I've been burned yeah. so many times in the past. I know there's like a rumor that well they're gonna, there's going to be a remake of Dead Space or reboot of Dead Space or whatever. Right. Um, Bioware no. has already confirmed the, that it won't be showing off anything from Dragon Age 4 or yeah. Mass Effect. Just because Resident Evil, the Resident Evil remakes were popular does not mean you get to reboot Dead Space, a franchise you killed because it <laughs> wasn't what you wanted it to be. It was a mm -hmm. horror franchise, but you wanted it to be fucking Call of Duty meets a mobile game. You don't get to reboot Dead Space because of that. And I'm not even a big Dead Space fan, but that's exactly what you're doing. Oh, we're going to get more about Battlefield 2042? I'm, I'm interested in Battlefield 2042. I haven't played Battlefield in a long time. I honestly could care less about Battlefield. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy if there's no single player, so they can just focus on what Battlefield is best at. Yeah, I don't want to play a single player. Although I liked yeah. Battlefield Three, I don't think I ever played Battlefield Four, the single player. I did not. I didn't. I played a little bit of Battlefield Four single player. It was bad. I did not like Battlefield Three, even though it takes place on the LIRR. That was awesome. That was nice. The first mission that was, was fun. awesome. Yeah. Um. But Battlefield One wasn't bad, but it was too short, and it could have been so much more. Um. Yeah, and apparently everybody hates Battlefield Five. Yeah, I'm interested in uh in this one. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I don't know if I'm gonna play it too much, but uh, yeah. I, I will. I will give it a try. Hopefully, as a beta. Um, but anyway, that will be on Thursday of this week. So yeah. look out for that. I'm not gonna stream a reaction to it. I don't think it's gonna be that good. But yeah. I think there'll be at least one or two announcements. I think there's rumors that there's gonna be a Star Wars thing. Like one Star Wars drop, but they they specifically uh, I, said no uh, Fallen Order stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Oh, I that's saw. what it was. I think they said no Fallen Order, but we do have something. Yeah, that was the quote. Anyway, last news for the day. Do last, we have Kirby. Uh, last news. Although rumored to have been destroyed, an eBay seller has reportedly uncovered an incredibly rare Nintendo e card e-reader card from e3 20 2002 and threw it up for auction where it's currently bidding for thousands of dollars the card is a first place kirby e-reader card from nintendo's e3 2002 show floor at the time attendees were given a promo pack containing these potentially prize-winning cards uh in, with the iconic nintendo character on it they came in three variants, first, second, and third place, with only 10 first place cards being printed. The seller, who has a 100% feedback on eBay, posted pictures of the first place card. It's worth noting that the card hasn't been independently verified, however. Uh, Anderson Central, the seller, did upload a video allegedly showing the card as a winner. He freaking According to the listing right before we get to see what it even does. According to the listing, the card hasn't been redeemed or graded. However, it is apparently good for a limited edition gold Game Boy Advance Pokemon New York City store limited edition handheld. It's unclear how anyone would redeem the prize, though the card is currently selling for $8,100 on Jesus eBay. Christ. There is an it's initiative rumored... to, uh, to dump all of these e-reader cards. Like there's a library yeah. like online. And they should because the Super Mario Brothers 3 e-reader cards like have extra levels. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I gotta check that out. Yeah. I, I remember, like, somebody remade them in Mario Maker 1, but I don't think they're available anymore. E3 uh, it is rumored that these... First prize. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It is rumored that these e-reader cards have been destroyed. Attendees typically walked over a scanner at the Nintendo booth to find out whether they had won. If the card was a winner, they'd hand the card over to Nintendo to receive their prize, and Nintendo would then presumably destroy the cards. 
Though if people forgot to turn them in, Nintendo couldn't destroy them. And there is also happens to be a pack of e-reader cards on eBay for $4,400. It's possible a first or second place card could be in there. So, so what do you, what did you win? Uh, it looks like, according to this, you could have won a limited edition gold Game Boy Advance Pokemon New York City Store edition. Oh, that's, I'd rather that. I'd rather get that. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say the card might be worth more than whatever the prize was, but honestly, I'd rather that. That's a freaking cool yeah. Game Boy Advance. Do they have a picture of that? Uh, I don't uh, know. Limited edition gold Game Boy Advance New York store limited edition. Uh, maybe it's this. It looks like it. Yeah, that that was probably it. New because York. yeah, Pokemon you know, Center it was for New York. E- yeah, it was because that's the um that was the model that works with the e reader. It's only $120. This is, I kind of want this. $120 is not bad for that. I mean, it's kind of, yeah. it's kind of gummy. It's got, the back's all crappy, but damn. Okay. You can so restore the e-reader, that. E-reader card was worth more than the freaking price they yeah. traded in it for. That's really sad. Anyway, uh, that is pretty cool. I'll have to check out these, uh, yeah. these, uh, Mario three levels. See what I can do about it. Yeah. That. Anyway, uh, let's uh, read some of this. Man of Steel for the five bits. Lethal Storm, thank you for the 42 months. Jesus, 42 months. I know we're old, dude. It's terrible. Yeah. Rosa, thank you for the 27 months. Yay and hiya. Hello. Hiya. Uh, okay. Now, it's everybody's favorite time. It's It's time for me to hit the stream deck. Do it. So this is uh, tying into Space Jam. Um, This is a tweet by Posting Twink. And it is uh, Bugs Bunny, but in the Evangelion suit. And it says, Nyeh, what's up, God? (laughs) I also like, if you scroll down a little bit, um hello kitty agitprop responded and it's another scene for evangelion but it's daffy duck Wait. oh i didn't even realize that one's pretty funny <laughs> i like i like this one where it's like the the, the freaking crucifix uh 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 angel that's all yeah. folks and i guess that's the end of the freaking anime um yeah, there's a lot of spoilers here. I haven't finished Evangelion. I'm only like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like at the end. I gotta. But it's, it's is that very, is that the end? Because then, then there's also the end of Evangelion. There's like a bunch of movies you gotta watch. Right. It doesn't really. Apparently, the ending is awful. Um. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm like 20, 20 episodes in or something ridiculous. Uh, how many episodes is it? Twenty six, maybe. Okay. It's it's it's. it's everybody says it's like the best anime it's it's a little slow i will say it, it half halfway through is when it starts to like get get good um and yeah. it's starting to get good i just i just kind of slowed down on it for some reason uh stop right there bob <laughs> <laughs> it's slow because it's an old anime yeah yeah i, I yeah I, I believe that and it's it's you know, i saw it's wacky and, and it's one of those things where like uh they they give you exposition for like way too long and then they get into like the good like the reason you're there so yeah oh pan, pan rizzo says you don't need those final six episodes so i'm just good i should just stop <laughs> yeah that's what happened when i watched death note i got to the to about as far as i am in this i got to like the end uh and then mm-hmm. there's like six more episodes or something but like basically in death note there's a big resolution and and it's over but then there's like a bunch more episodes and they introduce new characters and apparently everything i read about it ends it they end the synopsis before that happens 
So it's like, why am I even <laughs> going to keep reading it? If apparently yeah. nobody cares about that last, those last couple of episodes. So why am I even going to watch those episodes? So I stopped watching it. <laughs> but anyway. Um, uh, oh, we now we'll talk to you people. Yes. If you'll have to comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast, this is the part of the show where we will finally answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments as we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Matt. Matt. <laughs> uh, PDS says, sometimes Will's takes on these topics are so fucking out of touch that it sounds like he's just taking talking out of his ass and I can't relate at <laughs> all. What did we talk about last week? I don't even know. <laughs> Does this guy know how inconvenient it is to send your controllers to a company? You know, like you did, Will? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For any cup, for any amount, well, I'll let you know that I have been trying so hard to give this Joy-Con drift, and it sucks. Um, <laughs> does this guy know how hard it can be to send your controls to a company for any amount of time to fix an issue that happens again? Anyway, did we? What was the? We must have he... talked about Joy-Con drift at some point, and I talked about how how not big of a hassle it was. To send your controller in to Nintendo. He's just talking about... Will's just talking about his experience. What's the problem? <laughs> uh, because the issue is that a hardware level and it... Because the issue is at a hardware level and it's not the consumer's fault as he seemed to suggest with his poor comparison between Red Ring of Death and Drifting. Um, the problem isn't that Drift is happening. It is it? It's that Drift is happening this soon and this frequently drifting catches up to all controllers at some point but it can usually be fixed easily problem is that drift is happening to 80 dollars controllers you bought not even a year ago i don't think uh, uh i don't think we're like defending drift <laughs> no uh also for the record drift happened to my controller that i bought five years ago not a year ago. Um, look, you're not wrong in a sense that it, it sucks and it's a big problem that this is happening and it shouldn't really be happening. My whole thing was, for Nintendo's part, they're making it as harmless and as convenient as possible for you to send your controller back, have them fix it, and they send it back to you. They are trying their best, and they're doing, in my opinion, a decent job of trying to make it as hassle-free as possible. Because, I, yeah, it, it's a pain in the ass, especially if you would have to pay for it. But to their credit, they're doing the right thing. I think we even talked about uh, how it's uh, scummy that they didn't just fix the issue, that that they're yeah. they're kind of burying the, 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 the problem. Because they... They they still haven't admitted that Joy-Con drift is like a thing, um, yeah. Because they'd be admitting fault, and they'd have like they're in the middle of a lawsuit, uh, so yeah. they would it would uh, make them guilty basically. Um, so what they should have done was immediately when they figured out that there was an issue, they should have they should have either done a recall or uh, fixed the issue uh, from for future uh, uh, consoles, yeah. but they didn't do that. Uh, it's it's relatively easy to send you a Joy-Con in. It shouldn't have to happen. It still sucks that you have to do it. But the yeah. easiest way to fix your Joy-Con right now is just send it to Nintendo. However, yeah. I learned that if you have a special edition Joy-Con, you're not guaranteed to get the special edition Joy-Con back. Ooh. Yeah, so that sucks. That's that's terrible. Um, shame on Nintendo for not fixing the issue. But uh, yeah. uh, I guess we have to take what we can get. I don't know why this this man has uh, vitriol in his voice. Uh, Bug Zany says Will is completely right about the oversaturation of comics in the '90s. There used to be kiosks in the mall to get comics. That stopped too soon, and it was like a desert. Yep, it, it sucks now that because of that, the only comics that you can get in like grocery stores are fucking Archie comics, and not even the good Archie comics, like. The, the tiny ass digest reprints of like 80s Archie comics. Right. So 
it, it really did cause a lot of harm to the the greater distribution of comics. That's why you can only really get them in specialty shops and very rarely like a convenience store or a card shop. You know, it, I, I wish uh, there's no reason why comics can't be sold in like Walmart or Target, you know, next to the trading cards, but they aren't. And that is that is abysmal. And that's really on the comic book industry. That's not really on the fans. Uh, Rasper Norris says most of those Mario 64 will be console packets, right? What do those even come with the full box treatment as uh, a la carte cartridge? So he was, he was talking about, we were talking about the, the Mario 64 that sold for $1.5 million. Right. Um, and Rasper is asking, and we talked about how that's the most common game on the Nintendo 64. Mm-hmm. Most people have it. They probably don't have it in box or with manuals and whatnot. And Rasper is asking um, if that also includes the pack-in version of Mario 64 that came with the console. To my knowledge, there was no Mario 64 pack-in. Right. I th- at, at launch, it was sold separately. I know that. I don't know if there was ever a version of the Nintendo 64 that came with Mario 64 packed in. Regardless of whether or not it did, those those versions would not be worth one point five million dollars. Yeah, I don't remember Mario sixty four being being there. Uh, yeah, what's this one? I I just found a Walmart one, Walmart bundle. Uh, Mario sixty four player's guide. So not even the game. You just get the player's guide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, so Mario sixty four came out, uh, not with the N sixty four, right? Mar- when the Nintendo 64 launched, it was Mario 64 and Pilot Wings, and that was it. Oh, okay. It was the GameCube that didn't have a Mario game. Correct. Oh, here, here's the pack-in. It does have a pack-in. Um, okay. But yeah, th- I don't think it was like a wide, widely known. That wasn't the it was one. Probably a, it was probably a later version of the Nintendo 64 that came with Mario 64. Yeah, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I remember it just being plain. Um. Anyway. Uh. Do, do, do. I don't even know. I don't even know what the box looked. Maybe that had the box inside. I don't know. Yeah. What's this one? Atomic Purple. Oh no, this one. What game is this? Dark Rift. Did the Atomic Purple come with Dark Rift? No, the Atomic Purple just came with the controller. Oh, this has like a spot in the styrofoam for a game. Huh. Um, oh, here we go. The Nintendo uh, fan wiki. Cons- list of bundled games for all systems. Donkey Kong 64 is the only game to have ever been packed in with a Nintendo 64. What? According to this. What is this then? I don't know. Is this a lie? Maybe. Unless that was like a specialty thing. Weird. Yeah. Non-US bundle? Uh, It says NTSC. Yeah. It's estimated that between 1,000 and 5,000 as a variation were made. Hmm. Doesn't say what retailer that was or anything. Yeah. Very strange. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. I played the intro back. So. Uh anyway, uh we got Sebastian Laguna who says, Hey, I was listening to the stream yesterday. Everyone should join twitch.tv slash Wolfden on Twitch. 100 percent good time guaranteed. Uh unsubstantiated claim by Sebastian. Yeah. But I do agree that you should check out twitch.tv. Good time not guaranteed. Wolfden. Correct. Uh, and you know what? We're here every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. However, I stream most days at, at, at the night time. So uh, if you miss a stream, you might come for some other time and hang out and talk and whatever. Um... Late Snakes is might be one of those Shazam Mandela effect things. 
That's true. Maybe. Now we're in the chat for a yeah. very brief moment because I got to pee. Uh, Mecha Dragon, 10 bits. Had to focus on my work, but it's awesome to hear you guys again this week, bros. Thank you for being here, Mecha Dragon. Thank you. Uh, Anthony Edwards, 33. In the old days, they would put one in the box and slap a sticker on it. The bundles weren't always super official. That's true. Duh, they might have just shoved it, shoved the cartridge in the box mm -hmm. and called it a day. I think that the Donkey Kong 64 bundle, I know like it was, uh, it was, it was like printed on the box and it was like a big deal. So I think that's what that was counting. Not like just pack job bundles. Chris BX, who does the, uh, he does the time codes for this, for these streams. Mm -hmm. Uh, says Bob, when did you start the recording and are you cutting the time between loading screen and logo drop? Yes, I am. So the recording started right when the so we started late today. The recording mm -hmm. started right when the uh, the uh, the logo entered and I started the recording one hour and 55 minutes and 24 seconds ago. So good luck. <laughs> uh, Metascension, I know you're managing expectations and the Steam Deck, but what if it had a kickstand? <laughs> Whoa! Well, Game it better, changer. It better if that if that better be one damn sturdy kickstand. Yeah. It better be like a bike's bicycle kickstand. <laughs> I missed the Q&A. Did my question on Sp Ultimate Spider-Man make the cut? No, but you can ask it now. No, ask it now and make it good. Uh, where are we? Battle yeah, Tank Bob. Sam's, Sam's Club had a weird console bundles. I remember they had a Dreamcast extra controller and a game and a giant weird plastic case like you'd see a, a USB dongle come in. Yeah, Sam's Club and like Costco and those places, they would just make their own bundles they didn't care they don't care yeah they would they just get take this in the yeah. impenetrable plastic case yeah they did it for a, a lot of consoles back back then bob do an updated apartment slash setup tour on your personal channel uh maybe uh, maybe i want to do a video on how i shoot my videos uh uh pan rizzo do you think we'll get an oled switch light uh we gotta see how the success is with this one i don't think so i think the chances yeah. are low but nintendo does whatever the hell they want so maybe. i mean the switch Lite was intended to be like a lower cost entry level switch then mm -hmm. i'm putting an oled on it if they raise the price of the switch by 50 bucks for the oled they'll probably do the same thing with the switch light so that kind of defeats the purpose of the switch light yeah if they do it it'll be a late It'll be like right before the end of the generation and it'll be the same price, but uh, they're yeah. not going to do it. I don't think they would do that. Yeah. Uh, Mako Fox, what did you think of Ultimate Spider-Man? Because I think it is the second best Spider-Man show behind Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, I really like some of the crossovers that Ultimate did and my favorite was the Deadpool one. Anyway, thank you so much for a great podcast I listen to while I work. Um, I did not watch Ultimate Spider-Man, but everything I saw of it did not appeal to me. It looked super, super kitty. And Spectacular Spider-Man was not that. Spectacular Spider-Man was just good. And they canceled Spectacular Spider-Man to make Ultimate Spider-Man. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of kind of down on it for that. But if you liked it, that's good for you. Mecha Dragon says, Bob, did you get your hands on the Eve Spectrum monitor yet? Nope. I haven't even gotten any shipping information or anything. And I, I I chose the fastest shipping, so did anybody else? Is any other influencers getting their hands on it? Because I I tried to... So the Eve Spectrum is the first HDMI 2.1 monitor. Um, okay. It's going to be 4K, 120 hertz. It'll work with the new consoles and whatnot. It's going to be great. Um, but uh, uh, I pre-ordered it like a while ago. Um, and then I emailed them and I was like, Hey, I have a YouTube channel. I don't want a free one. I just want to let you know, I bought one and I would like to be included in the first round so that I could make a video on it. If that's okay. And they 
were like, you got to talk to this person. And then they were asking me all these questions and stuff. And I, I got mad and stopped talking to them because <laughs> like they were basically making me go through a whole rigmarole as if i wanted a free one and i was like I, the whole reason yeah. i bought it was because i didn't want to go through this rigmarole but anyway uh, so i'm just waiting like everybody else to get to get mine because i don't want to go through their rigmarole anyway there's another one bob i wanted to say thank you for your evening streams i work third shift so your streams help me through thanks so much thank you for watching uh i chevalier honestly bob no honestly people are hyping the steam deck on youtube did no one learn their lesson from the bloomberg switch pro debacle that's what i'm trying to say yeah uh no of course not nobody learns their lessons <laughs> uh grizzo says hey bob not sure if it's been said in chat uh, i'm just joining the chat but those extra mario 3 levels are in mario 3 advance on gba Awesome to catch you guys live. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Grizzo. I th I would assume that they were an add-on to the, that game. They might be in the game, but you had to unlock them with the e-reader cards. That's what I want to know, because uh, so, I, I want to do that. <laughs> if you can find a ROM of Mario 3 on the GBA, maybe it's just it's a, a simple hack to, to unlock them. Uh, Crispy Cornbread says, hey, Bob, I was wondering how I can find the music you used in your custom Xbox controller video. Could you tell me? In the intro of that video, I used a song from Epidemic Sound. However, it was fucking copyright claimed, even though I have a license really? for Epidemic Sound. Yeah. So I'm currently fighting a copyright claim for a song I literally own the license to. Yeah. So uh, I, it's called Christmas in Tokyo. Uh, I don't know where you could find it other than Epidemic Sound. Um. But uh, it's copyright claimed, so don't give them any fucking credit. <laughs> and I've used the song before, too, which is crazy. Uh, uh, Mecha Dragon again with 10 bits. If you have a Wii U, Bob, you can download the virtual console version of Super Mario 4 Advance. We own it, don't we? Oh, we own it, but it's yeah. sealed. Sealed. I am not opening that. Yeah. <laughs> that has all the e-reader levels unlocked from the start. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, the Wii U one or the actual one? Yeah, the Wii U one. I'm going to emulate it if I ever play yeah. it. Um, yeah, people are saying they're included in the Wii U version. Uh, okay. Guys. Oh, wait, last thing. That's been happening to my channel, too. Been using Artlist, and some artists are using multiple distribution companies. Different distributors don't know that the song can be licensed. I think some of the time what happens is somebody will take a song from one of these uh, like like a Epidemic Sound or Artlist or, or in some cases like those chill hop free music sites that, that the music is supposed to be royalty free. People will take that yeah. music and like rap over it and then license that and they think that it's transformative but it ends up going through the DRM and, and, and fucking everybody. So yeah. uh yeah anyway thank you guys for hanging out thank you for tuning in thank you for watching us thank you for chatting with us as always the wolf den podcast is every single tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put it up as an archive version over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf den podcast so you can go watch it over there on demand whenever you want but if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast services of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, we will be on, I'll be on tomorrow, uh, which is Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be playing Pokemon Unite with Dan, uh, Dan Jackson and AJ and one more person. I think it's Jerrica, but I'm not sure. Um, so I'll see you then. I got a lot of work to do on a video before then. Uh, and I'll see you on Thursday for a video and probably another live stream. Oh yes. We got a very special live stream coming up on, on, on Thursday. Uh, I will be able to play a Mario game with you at home, but I'm oh afraid boy. to tell you what it is.
because it's going to get taken down. <laughs> It'll probably get taken down while we're playing it if we get enough people to do it. Oh, but, that'll that'll be funny. But uh, just bring a. You don't even need a controller. You just need a computer. But uh, twitch.tv slash wolfden on Thursday night. Uh, anyway, everybody check out Dan. I'll be streaming Pokemon Unite with him tomorrow. Uh, thanks for being here, and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.